You write, quote, those who somehow manage to escape death by the initial blast, shockwave, and firestorm suddenly realize an insidious truth about nuclear war, that they're entirely on their own. Here begins a, quote, fight for food and water. I mean, that is um, a wake-up call on top of a wake-up call, that we go back to a kind of primitive fight for survival, each on their own. And by the way, those details were given to me by Obama's FEMA director, Craig Fugate, who was in charge of, um, so FEMA is the agency in America that plans for nuclear war, okay? And what Fugate, Fugate said to me was, you know, Annie, we plan for asteroid strikes. These are called low probability but high consequence events. And FEMA is the organization that, you know, when there's a hurricane or an earthquake or a flood, FEMA steps in and they do what's called population protection planning, right? They take care of people. And what Fugate told me is after a nuclear strike, after a bolt out of the blue attack, he used those terms, there is no population protection. Everyone's dead. Right. And he means that metaphorically, but also kind of more literally, because he just said at that point, you just hope that you stalked Pedialyte. What do you think happens to humans? Like, how does uh, human nature manifest itself in such conditions? Do you think like brutality will come out? Like, people will just for survival will steal, will murder, will. I can't imagine that not happening. I think that's why people love post-apocalyptic television shows and films, because they see that. And then, of course, there's always one great charismatic person who's trying to restore morality. And these are great narratives that people like to tell themselves in the world of science fiction. But what we're dealing with is science fact in this scenario. And it is meant to terrify people into realizing, wait a minute, this is a conversation that absolutely should be have had while it can still be had. Because the realities, when you have the director of FEMA telling you this, it's a real wake-up call. And by the way, Craig Fugate was so transparently human with me, and I quote him directly in the book, but he spoke about you asked me earlier about like what would be going through the president's mind, and we don't know, I don't know. But Craig Fugate told me what would be going through his mind. And he said, along the lines I'm paraphrasing, like it's almost something you couldn't even comprehend. You would just it would just like ruin you. You know, his words are really powerful. And of course, the FEMA director in the scenario is notified in that first window while the launch, you know, while the ballistic missile is on its way and no one in America yet knows. And I have the FEMA director pull over to the side of the road and jump in a helicopter that's sent for him to take him to the bunker that FEMA goes to, which is called Mount Weather. And so he's aware that Fugate was aware that as FEMA director, you would likely be taken to a safe place, however many hours you're going to be safe, um, or days, or maybe weeks, or maybe months. But as I also learned from the cyber people I interviewed, that, you know, there's a complete fallacy that these military bases can continue functioning. They run on diesel fuel. And when the fuel stops pumping, there's no more generators. Electricity's gone. Uh, communication lines are all gone. The food supply, all of it, the, all the supply chains is gone. Um, it's terrifying, and that's just in the first few days, first few hours. 